Good morning, everybody. Welcome to church. It is so good to see you gathered here with us at St. Thomas's Newcastle. If we've not met before, my name is James. I'm really looking forward to all that God has in store for us today. It is a great service. We've got Joanna sharing from the Bible later on. And we'll. Hello! Sorry, I'm surprised by an old friend there sat on the front row. That is lovely. Um, and if you're joining online, a huge hello to you too. We're so glad you are able to be with us. Do comment along. We would love to know what God is speaking to you about this morning. As I was saying, um, it's a fantastic service. It's an all-age service, so there'll be no groups for our young people today. Um, we're all mixed in together, an all-ager. So um, there is something for everybody. If you are a child in the room and you're on half term, can I have a show of hands? Oh, there you are. Are you having a good half term? You are. Have you been able to lie in really long in the morning and give your mums and dads lots of sleep? Some of you, no, no, not quite. Oh, well, I hope you're having a fantastic half term and we are so pleased you're able to gather with us here. Could I invite you to stand? In a moment, we're going to worship together through song. And then we'll hear from the Bible. We'll respond in prayer. And then I think we might have a cup of tea together. Does that sound okay? Fantastic. Before we started today, we gathered to pray. And um, one of the words shared was from Matthew 18. It said, whenever two or three are gathered in my name, I will be there with them. In other words church gathered here in Newcastle, God is here with us. Isn't that fantastic? And someone else shared something about whose voice is loudest today. I don't know how you felt coming into church. You might have come in buzzing. You might have come in drenched. You might have come in with a sense of hopelessness. But the question was this, whose report do you believe? Is it one of despair? or loss, because God has a message for us today, one of hope and of love and of joy, because word is getting out across the streets of Newcastle, there has been a resurrection. Jesus has returned from the dead, and he's made a claim on our lives. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. So with that in mind, we're going to bring our confession to God. This is our Easter confession. It acknowledges that God is with us. He is alive. So when we say these words, you're not saying them to me. I cannot forgive your sins, but the one who conquered death and raised from the grave can. So picture Jesus resurrected and let's say these words together. In fact, join in with the words in bold if possible. Jesus Christ, risen master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins. We confess to you our weakness and our unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and we have doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. Jesus is alive. He has heard our confession and he loves to forgive when we confess our sins. And may the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. Friends, we're going to worship God together now. This is a fantastic song that declares God is good and he does good. Let's worship God together through song. Good morning, shall we sing together? Here we are. And here we are, people of faith. Some with smiles, others with fears at their face. Here we come, ready to bring who we are. Sing, God is good. Yes, God is good.
at last, meeting face to face. I am yours, Jesus, you are mine. Let's sing endless joy, perfect peace. And endless joy, perfect earthly pain. Earthly pain finally will cease. Celebrate, Jesus is alive.
Now my heart's, now my heart's desire is to know you more, to be found in you and known as yours. Acknowledge that Jesus is here with us. We've confessed to him. We've brought him our own sacrifice of praise and worship in response to his wants, perfect and sufficient sacrifice for us on the cross. And we're going to turn our prayers now to pray for the world, for the church and for ourselves. If you're a child, actually, would you come maybe to the front? And feel free as we turn our prayers now to either sit or to kneel or to stand. But children, if you want to come and gather with me, we're going to use these things to help us pray for the world, to pray for the church and to pray for ourselves. Let's take a posture of prayer. Let's sit around this table. So we're not going to take these now, but we're going to use them as an aid to pray. Can anybody tell me what this is what do you think this is it's the wine and what does the wine signify to us what does the wine signify the blood of Christ now as we remember Christ's blood I want us to remember some of the pain in the world maybe some of the pain that we know in our families or through our schools perhaps we know someone who isn't well today someone who has a cut or a scrape or a bruise You've got one. Well, let's pray that by his wounds, we are healed. Let us pray. Jesus, we lift up those that we know that are sick or hurting today. We're mindful of places in the world where there is fighting, in Gaza, in Israel, in Ukraine and Russia. And on this day, Lord, we pray that you would bind up the brokenhearted and you would make them well. And when I say, Lord, in your mercy, we can say together, hear our prayer. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Who can tell me what this is? What's this? The body of Christ it is. The bread signifies to us the body. Now, one of the pictures in the Bible to us is that as God's people, we're all joined together as a body. Some of us are eyes, some of us are arms, some of us are toes. All of us are really important. 
So we're going to pray for the church, that it would be strengthened as the body of Christ. God, we pray those of us who've been baptised have been joined into Christ's body. And we pray today we would realise more and more what our part in the body is. And that we would each use our gifts as a hand or an eye or a foot to build up the body for the good of everybody. Not just in this church, but across this region and the world. God, strengthen your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And there's one last thing I want to pray for. It's for ourselves. Now, can you blow into your hands and catch your breath? That's it. Hold it tight. Don't let it go. In the Bible, in John's Gospel, there is a moment where Jesus breathes on his disciples and says, receive my spirit. So you've caught the breath and let's put it on our hearts and we're going to pray, come Holy Spirit. Fill my heart. One of the beautiful things that the Holy Spirit does is he reveals Jesus to us. So as we've prayed, come Holy Spirit, may each of us gathered here this morning be captivated again by the beauty, the wonder, and the reality of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you for praying. Boys and girls, you can stay seated because there is a wonderful thing that's happened in the church. Our young people, our youth have been on a residential. They've been on a week and a week away together hearing about Jesus. And guess what? They've recorded a video for us to watch. So we're going to let you watch the TVs on the screen. And I can't wait for you to hear what God has been doing with our young people at St. Thomas's. Let's turn our attention to the screens. Hi, I'm Joel. I'm one of the youth here at St. Thomas's youth team. Uh, so, here at Wydale, we've been here for the past couple of days having a great time. Uh, I'm now going to go ask some of the youth what their uh, favourite moments and encounters with God have been like. So on Wednesday night, it was really good. We were, we were feeling, praying, and I just felt God was trying to tell me what I was doing with my life. So yeah, it was really good. And my highlight was probably the slip and slide on Wednesday afternoon. Uh, important moment with God, uh, Wednesday night, same as what David just said. Um, just, I just felt God, like, I know come into my life a lot more on Wednesday night. It was just very special to be there. And uh, highlight, um, yeah, sometimes of falling out of bed was funny. So I'll go, I'm going to go with that. I really struggle with anxiety and feeling sick with anxiety. And just yesterday, um, the whole day I felt this sort of, weird feeling in the same place I feel my anxiety sickness and it took me all day to figure out what it was and then in the evening session we were trying to encounter with the spirit and I just kept getting pictures and words and different things and I just realized that that was a sense of joy and yeah that was really cool. Uh, so I've basically come to understand the importance of uh, journaling and writing down what God says to you because uh, quite often I can forget it and stuff like that so if I've got it written down like on my phone or on paper then uh I remember it. Well, God has done a lot of things. He has inspired me to be more open to my very good friends here at St. Thomas's Youth Night out in Wydell, and he's also given us great times with praise and worship. The singing has been on point as usual, and he's uh, really been moving lots of people. And we've all been giving great talks, and some of the youth have been stepping up, presenting their talks and testimonies as well, which has all been good. Uh, a highlight of mine was our controversial win in um, Capture the Flag uh, and this saxophone. 
for me, a highlight would definitely be Capture the Flag. It was a really fun game, and it's just sandwiched between worship, which makes it even better. I mean, I think that evening services have been the best, like just seeing how the Holy Spirit moves through everyone. It's been so overwhelming. It's just absolutely incredible. Has God been doing anything that's changed drastically in your life so far? I think for me, my faith was like a thing that I kind of kept to myself. But one thing I've learned this week is that I, I've got so many people I can share it with. And I've just like grown so much in confidence. And I just, it's just been so amazing to see like how everyone's come together as a community. Uh, well, I've never been on this residential before, and um, the group of people here are really good, and I've definitely got closer to them and closer to God through that and stronger in my faith. And being around them just is so good and refreshing, and just to be around other Christians. So, and also this place is great. So, so I think this week I've learned a lot about like worshiping like as a community and like finding your people and like knowing that you can go to them for like joy or if you're sad or anything really. And I think my highlight was last night, um, worshiping and just praising and all those good things. Yeah. Bosh. <laughs> Wasn't that wonderful? Praise God for Joel and our youth team, but praise God for the way he's worked in the lives of our young people. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Boys and girls, you can take a seat. I'm just going to share two notices in the life of our church, then we're going to hear from Joanna as she shares from the Bible to us. Um, So the first thing to mention is that there is an online prayer ministry training tomorrow. So one of the things we love to practice as a church is listening well to the Bible and trying to respond and apply it to our lives, but also to stand with one another in prayer. And we want to do that to the best and safest possible way we can. So there'll be some online prayer ministry training happening tomorrow, just sharing some best tips on how we might love one another and serve one another well in prayer. And you can find out more about that, date, the date's tomorrow, but the time And to let us know that you're coming through stthomas.church slash events. We have an event page on our website and you can find out more there. Secondly, we have an AGM coming up on the 12th of May. An AGM is the annual general meeting, um, I think. But it's where we talk about the family business in the church. And um, there's an opportunity to vote for some of our elected representatives. And, um, and hear about the finances of the church and our governance. And so we would love you to come because um, we're a family here as a church. And so if you would like to know more about who we are, what we do, and how we're responsible with what we do, the AGM on the 12th of May would be a good thing to come to. And you can vote at that if you're part of our electoral roll, which is one of the ways in the Church of England you can sign up to be a member of this church. And the way you can do that is go to stthomas.church forward slash roll up. stthomas.church slash roll up. Wonderful. One of the things we're going to do now is have an opportunity to give. Again, this is part of our worship to Jesus. God who has given us so much, we can never outgive a God so generous. But perhaps God is staring us to respond financially. So there'll be a QR code on the screen. There's an opportunity to give at the Connect station at the back where there's a chip and pin machine. Or perhaps you can give online. But God is doing so many things in the church as we seek to follow Jesus, build community, and love Newcastle. And God who's been so generous to us, this is our opportunity to be generous and give to the work of the church and to give to God. So we'll take a few moments while that's on the screen, there'll be some music playing and then we'll hear from Joanna from the Bible. Thank you. 
Not yet. Oh. Again, yeah, no, no. Fantastic. In a moment, going to pray for Joanna as she speaks to us from the Bible. Boys and girls, though, we have a craft for you to do too. So much like last week, we've got some tables at the front with some colouring in and felt it. It is a, you are able to do it yourselves, but parents and carers, godparents. Aunts and uncles, grandparents, this is what you need to do. So you're going to fold a piece of paper like this, draw a line at the bottom, and make sure that your thumb touches the edge in the middle. That's what I forgot to do earlier. And you're going to draw around your hands, and then you're going to cut around the stencil, and it will look something like this. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. I did that all by myself, didn't need no parent to help me. <laughs> And then you're going to either cut a hole in the middle to remind us of the wounds Jesus being pierced for our transgressions. And you can either cut a hole or you can go to my friend Becca over here. Becca is our children's and families worker here at St. Thomas's, and she's got some love heart stickers mm -hmm. and she's going to make sure that you only get two and you can stick them on the hands. <laughs> and this is to remind us of Jesus's, what happened to Jesus on the cross and to help us understand what Joanna is going to share from the Bible. Um, because you have seen and so you have believed, but blessed are those who believe who have not seen in John chapter 20. So have fun making that craft, boys and girls. Let's pray for Joanna. Outstretch your hand to her as she speaks to us from the Bible. God, thank you for your written word to us in the Bible. Help us to hear it, to understand it, and to meet with you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, James. Good morning, everybody. My name's Joanna, if you've not come across me. I'm one of the uh, clergy here, and it's my delight to share God's Word with us this morning. So we're starting a new sermon series this week, a four-week series called Knowing Christ. And I'm week talking about knowing the, His presence. Next week, it's knowing His Word, knowing His call, and then lastly, knowing the fruit. And we're going to begin with knowing his presence. And Ava, one of our lovely young people who was away with us this week, is going to read for us. So our reading this morning, if you've got a Bible, John chapter 9, 20, chapter 20, beginning at verse 19. If you'd like to get your apps out, open up God's word. John chapter 20, verse 19. Wrong, well spotted. Okay. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for the fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when he saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. 
Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have eternal life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Asa. That was great. So I love this post-Easter passage. And the funny thing is that clergy often have the Sunday after Easter off. That's why most of our clergy aren't here. And so I rarely have had a chance to preach on it. But it's an absolutely lovely one. It's so human, it's so personal, and very powerful. We see the disciples, just like us, ordinary folk, learning what it means to be a believer, a disciple of Jesus coping with very normal and very natural fears and doubts. I don't think there'll be anybody in this room who hasn't had any fears and doubts, either in their life generally or even about their faith. But it's also astonishingly powerful. They're meeting with Jesus after he's risen from the dead. That's quite something. That's quite amazing. So we're going to look at three aspects of their experience and see how that compares with ours. We're going to look at their fears, we're going to look at their doubts, and most importantly, we're going to look at their faith. And we will see that knowing and experiencing the presence of Jesus alive is what made all the difference and makes all the difference for us. So let's begin with fears. The disciples were meeting probably in the same room where they had the Last Supper with Jesus, but this time he's not there. The Bible says they were meeting behind locked doors, fearful that the Jewish leaders might come for them and do what they did to Jesus to them. They're fearful of the future. What happens now? Where do we go without Jesus? What's the purpose and direction of our lives without him? For three years, they'd followed him. It had turned their lives upside down. And now, they're absolutely lost. What are your fears, I wonder? Ian and I visited a local Sunderland church in Holy Week on the Tuesday night. We couldn't get up early enough to go to the early morning prayer meeting here at church. But they had lots of prayer stations spread around the church. And we were the only two there. And they were on different themes. And the first one um, was about Palm Sunday, which is the the Sunday when Jesus comes in on a donkey and his disciples and others in Jerusalem are shouting Hosanna and they're so excited to see him. They were hoping to be set free from the Roman oppression and everything went wrong and Jesus dies. Hopes were dashed, their fears now in the upper room are absolutely looming large for them. I wonder, there was a question at the beginning of that prayer station that says, what are your fears? So I said, uh, I'm worried that corrupt and immoral people um, and leaders are becoming much more powerful in our world. I fear that we're destroying our beautiful world and the creation around us. I fear that mankind is so, so, uh, so selfish that wars and conflicts are becoming more common. Now, these were big picture answers, and I felt safe on those. What I hadn't realized was I didn't actually ask myself, what am I frightened about me much more personally? That I might develop dementia like my dad did? That I might die of cancer like my mum did? My worst fear... How can I live alone again if Ian should die suddenly? (laughs) Sounds like I've got a fear of death and dying. I'm just telling you, those are the things, if you said to me, what do you fear? I, I do, those are things that we have no control over. And often fears don't ever actually come into being. That's one of the the bad things about them, the things that we believe that we shouldn't because they don't happen, but they do sometimes. What happens when I die is a more common one, isn't it? Will I go to heaven or where else? Uh, Might I lose my job? Will I be single for always? Will I never have children? These are real fears. Let's move on from the fears. Let's leave them behind. Let's move on to the doubts. Because don't leave church yet. You must wait until we get positive, okay? 
We all like certainties in our life. We like to know what's real and true. But actually, there are lots of doubts, aren't there? And here, the disciples in the upper room are having their doubts. Did we get it all wrong? Wasn't Jesus going to, wasn't he going to be the Messiah, isn't he? They were trying to believe the unbelievable, that he'd come back to life on the third day. But now, what's happened? He's, he's dead, isn't he? They were remembering all the wonderful miracles and the healings. So what? You could hear them say. Do you sometimes struggle with doubts? Does God heal? Does he hear my prayers? Does he really love me? Can it be true that he's got a wonderful future planned for me? Do you doubt that God's got everything in control in your life? Especially the difficult things, perhaps the health scare that you're going through, perhaps the death of a loved one, perhaps depression. Are all these things in God's hands? And these are the sorts of things that challenge us and cause us to doubt. They're not so much a crisis of faith where you go, that's it, I don't believe in God any longer. It's not that. It's more, I, I've doubted what I've believed and I'm not sure what to believe now when these times that come are so challenging. Now as Christians, I believe it's absolutely fine to have doubts, well, and fears. It is okay I think it's a moment when we're stretched, uh, when we have questions. It's healthy, it's realistic, it's authentic. There's no point in saying, I'm not going to discuss it. It's better to say, I'm struggling with this. What do you think? It's good to have them. Because I think then we appreciate why we do believe and we understand better. This is where our faith comes in. This is where we have to take a risk and trust because we haven't got dead certs. We haven't got definite answers. We can't understand all things. And so we have to reach out and we have to not depend on ourselves and our own abilities, but to depend on something far more qualified, someone far more capable of looking after us. Almighty God, who created the world, created you and me, created, knows everything about me. These moments where we wonder and we doubt that's the moment to turn to God, not to ourselves. Do you find it hard to believe the incredible, the impossible, and the unbelievable? Well, join the club, because that's exactly how the disciples were feeling. They'd lived with him, they'd seen him with their own eyes. And yet here in the upper room, they're struggling to be brave, struggling to be faithful to him. They're doubting, he said, what was true. And even though Mary had seen the Lord and told them, they're still not sure because they hadn't seen him for themselves. So what do we do with these fears and doubts? In the first section of our reading, if you go back to your Bible, chapter 19, it says, on the evening of the first day, Jesus comes and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. The presence of the living Lord Jesus made all the difference. Seeing his hands and his side, they were overjoyed. Their doubts and fears melted away. They knew it was true. He was back from the dead. They believed what Mary had told them. He is alive. The power of encountering the presence of Jesus enabled them to overcome their doubts and fears. What was that power? If you read on, verse 21, and again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was given. So now Jesus has died, he's no longer human, and God sends his Holy Spirit. And this is how we know not just the disciples then, but we know now that Jesus is with us through the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit's job to make Jesus known to us. And that's why we invite the Holy Spirit to come and be with us and make Jesus known here in his word, here in communion, in all the ways in which we need to know God with us. For the disciples, this was all wrapped up in them experiencing his presence because he wasn't just with them again, but he was going to live in them. This 
is a powerful story. And can we see how it can, we encountering the living Christ can impact all of us today? This is for everyone, whatever you're going through, whether you believe or not, there's a lovely moment and a step of faith to make. We need to experience the reality of God's presence with us. Christ, the living Christ in us. This changes everything. It wasn't just a memory for the disciples of, oh, what it felt like, isn't it nice to have him with us again? This was Jesus with them in a new way. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he comes to us in just the same way. Jesus rose from the dead, returned to be with the Father, and now he can be here, there, and everywhere in us. Amazing, isn't it? We still have the little problem of doubting Thomas, though, in the passage, so let's move on to him. He's lovingly referred to as the doubting Thomas, and yet this Thomas has made a really big difference to all of us hundreds and hundreds of years ahead. So chapter 20 still, but verse 24. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the 12, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, no, I'll leave that. We'll wait till that bit. So we've looked at fears, we've looked at doubts, and we move into faith here. Why wasn't Thomas there? Would have you been there? It's a bit puzzling, isn't it? Was he so disappointed that Jesus was dead that he didn't even want to be with his friends? For some people, grief is very hard to bear, and yet they want to be on their own to work it out, to sort it out in their own time. I think the wisdom of this passage, though, tells us that Dom Thomas shouldn't have stayed away. Obviously, we wouldn't have had the story if he had, but, you know, but he shouldn't have stayed away. He shouldn't have gone it alone. He shouldn't have given up the family of Jesus' followers at a time like that. That was his support system. Faith is to be learned and shared and experienced together with others. That's how we encourage each other and help each other along the way. Don't be stoical. Don't shy away from admitting your brokenness. Be vulnerable. Say you're hurting. Say you're struggling. That you're wondering whether it's all worth it. God is with us and church is with us. And between that, those two things, we can find our way through those difficult times. Church is here for us when we're rejoicing and everything's wonderful and also through those very difficult times when we're doubting and we're fearful. Find those who know and love you well. Let them sit with you, not try to fix you, but be with you in the silence and the tears. Let them pray for you and walk through that time in your life. Some of my closest and most enduring friends are Christian brothers and sisters who've been with me through the dark times. And even though they don't live anywhere near, they are still precious to me. And I am so grateful for their caring, patience, support, their love and prayer. I need to be with Christians when it's difficult, don't you? I need to come to church. And even if I don't feel like rejoicing and really enjoying the songs, I look at the words and I know many of them are from God's word or they speak of truths. And I'll sing them whether I feel them or not because that's the way we do it. The joy of the Lord is our strength. To be in the presence of God doesn't mean we have to be all sorted and right. You might have just come in today and think, well, I don't even know what I'm doing here or my life's a mess. That's absolutely fine. God says, come to me just as you are. He loves us and he meets us where we are. And this is what happened for Thomas. He missed out. And I think that's part of his pain. That's what probably makes him really cross. So he lays down an ultimatum. He says to the other disciples, unless I put my hand in his side and my finger in the nail holes in his hand, I'm not going to believe. And off he stomps. And of course, the next bit where I stopped. 24, verse 24. Now Tom, uh, sorry, 26. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. 
Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. Now, as you heard, some of us were away this week with the youth and we've had an amazing week and it was, that's just great to see it. One of the things I noticed was the people who gave talks, every so often they'd stop and they'd say, say that after me. And I think it's really good. And there's no reason why we are, can't all do it because it helps it go in. So when I wrote this down, stop doubting and believe, I went, say that after me. Stop doubting and believe. Doesn't matter how old or young you are. If you take nothing away, go away. Stop doubting and believe, right? That's a good one. So uh, it says, stop doubting and believe. And then Thomas said to him, to Jesus, my Lord and my God. Notice, we don't get told whether he actually touched his fingers, his hand, his side. Because what he does is he says, my Lord and my God. And Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and have yet believed. So as they gather again, this time Jesus comes into the room. Thomas has all he needs. Jesus is there. And Jesus offers him a chance to test out. And this is what the children are doing. A pair of hands, a nice not gory way of expressing the love of Jesus in his hands. And a space in the middle where he isn't, but he is. And you know what? Thomas is the first person in John's gospel to say, you are God. That was revealed to him in that moment when he met him, when he said, more or less, here I am. And this is a really important shift because beforehand, he knew him, he followed him. He, Thomas would have said Jesus was his Lord and his, his teacher. But now he knows that Jesus is God. He realizes because the Holy Spirit is present in Jesus and it reveals Jesus to him. Jesus responds, because you have seen me, you believe. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. In the Gospels, it says over 500 other people saw Jesus alive and so believed. And many of those will have become the church that then spread out around the world and enables us to be here today. But who are those who have not seen and believed? Us. We didn't see it. We weren't there. And yet we can believe. Millions of people around the world believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We didn't live with him. We couldn't touch his wounds. But now, by his Holy Spirit, Jesus reveals to us. He works in us. So with Thomas, I believe that faith grows in in difficult times. It's not that we earn it, but that it grows like a muscle. And so our faith muscle, the more you use it, the more it works. And when we have difficult times, that's what we learn. We learn more about our faith and more about our trusting in Jesus. And so here he's discovered, yes, this is what my faith is. While we were at um, New Wine at the leadership conference, some of the rest of the, you were here too in February, there was one of the women bishops and she spoke about reaching out to God and how a typo had occurred when she was typing up her talk, well, probably wasn't typing it, but, and it was, she said it went on the screen and instead of saying reaching out to God, it said, listen carefully, R-E hyphen C A. start again. R-E hyphen A-C-H-I-N-G. Same letters as reaching, but it actually says re-aching for God. Repeat after me. Re-aching for God. That's another one. Reaching for God. And I think that our desire and our longing for God sometimes is really obvious and other times a bit like when Amelie said there was something in her that was no longer the anxiety, it was something else. Sometimes we don't recognize what our aches are and what our feelings are. But I think that the, the confidence that we gain from the Holy Spirit is this deep ache inside us that says, I want to know God and I want to know his peace. And this is what Thomas experienced and his faith was revitalized and renewed. He went on to believe and trust in God for the rest of his life in powerful ways. 
He traveled to India as the Holy Spirit led the church out and create, um, established churches because he preached the gospels and many churches began out there. And in his later life, he was martyred. So he died for his faith in India, becoming the patron saint of India. And of course, who's our church name after? You can shout that one out too, if you like. St. Thomas, not a bad person to uh, remember. So I just want to keep this short because the children are doing really well and the parents and carers as well helping them. Um, so as we come to an end, I want to remind you, it's okay to have doubts and fears, yes? It's even healthy. And when we re-ache, when we reach out for God, he comes to us and speaks peace over us. He did it two times. They needed it twice. It wasn't just the traditional greeting that you would expect over there and in countries like that. He came and spoke peace over them and he comes today and speaks his peace over us and he breathes his Holy Spirit on them. And when we encounter the Holy Spirit, we invite the Holy Spirit to come and be in us to, sh to tell us, to show us, to help us know that he is alive. He gives us uh, a new experience of his presence with us, his peace and a power. So this side of Easter, beyond the grave, with Jesus as our risen Lord, may we all seek to know the presence of Jesus in our lives. That's the only way we can live our lives, seeking him, not hanging on to a memory like the disciples had, well, I, he was with us, or this is how it was, but no, seeking now a fresh and a new daily experience of God's presence with us. As you wake up in the morning, perhaps read your Bibles and pray. As you go about your daily lives, as you invite God to be with you, seek God's holy presence with you and allow his Holy Spirit to go with you wherever you go. May we all seek to believe and trust in him more day by day. May we all know his living presence calming our fears, meeting us in our uncertainty and our difficult times. And may we invite, may we desire, may we re-ache and reach out for his Holy Spirit to make Jesus' living presence more and more real to us daily. And the wonderful thing is, I know that God, by his Spirit, will come and meet us. Amen. Thank you, Joanna. The children have been so busy over here preparing their crafts. Um, for us, and you can have a look at those at the end if they're willing to share their work with us. But could I invite us to stand? We're going to affirm our faith in Jesus. The book of Hebrews says that faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. It is described as a gift from God to us, something we don't muster up in ourselves, but God delights in giving to us. And faith comes from hearing the word. That is the gospel of Christ. So as we affirm our faith in Jesus through these statements, know that they're rooted in the Bible and let faith rise in us as we join in the words in bold. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, the source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? We believe and trust in him. That's amazing. Thank you. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, God has offered his peace to us on the cross, and we've received it 
freely. Let us share a sign of that peace with one another as our preparation for coming to share in this family meal of communion together. So may the peace of God be always with you. Let's share a sign of that peace with those around us through a handshake, a hug. If you know them, give them a kiss, but let's share a sign of the peace of Jesus. If I could invite you back into your seats, please. And I'm also going to invite Che to come up. Che is one of our younger people from our church. And this morning, Che is going to help us with the first part. And it's questions about what we're doing here. And it's lovely because recent weeks, the children and those who've been leading in communion have been taking a part and learning about the different parts. So he's got some questions and we have the answers coming up on the screen. So when Che asks us a question, Che is also Ava's brother, so isn't that nice? Teamwork from the family. Um, If you would like to answer the questions. Who are we remembering and who is here with us? Jesus Christ, the Lord who lives today. Why do we take this bread? To show that his body was given up to death for us. Why do we take this wine? To show that Jesus passes. Why is there one bread in one cup? Because we are one family. We belong to each other like the parts of a body. Why do we come to his table? He invites us because he is with us. We are his people and we share his life. For how long will Christians celebrate like this? Until Jesus comes to take us to be with God in heaven. Thank you, matey, that was lovely. Good lad. <clears throat> and so, If you've not been here for communion before, all the words will come on the screen if you'll join in in the bold words. Uh, When it comes to communion, we have gluten-free and non-alcoholic wine, which will be at the front. And uh, I'll say the rest when we get there. So, because by his Holy Spirit, because Jesus rose again from the dead, has gone to be with the Father, I can say, and you can reply, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You 
embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice of sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, Jesus took bread and he gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for us. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear, uh, your dear son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. So if you are baptized, if you know and love the Lord Jesus and regularly take communion, please do come forward. If you're not sure about that, uncertain, please still come forward for a blessing. It'd be so good to be able to pray for you as, you as we all experience the presence of Christ with us. If those who have not yet been invited for communion like to come forward, so Dominic, could you come with um, Helen? Thank you. And... Luke, would you come with Libby? That's lovely, thank you. Oh, actually, I only need two, don't I? Yep, that's fine. You, you four, that's good. I'll be with you. Thank you. Body of Christ, broken for you. Body of Christ, broken for you. As we receive communion, shall we worship together? I sing your grace is enough.
I've tasted and seen 
moment I'm going to share a blessing with us before we head off into the week and before we head off the invitation stands to share in a cup of tea uh, with us the coffee is ready the tea is and another thing is we've got prayer ministry at the sides um, to my left your right and we'd love to pray this morning and my sense is this we have heard with our ears the message of faith. We have seen with our eyes the holes in his hands through the craft of the children. And we have seen his sacrifice laid out for us on the table behind us, the meal of our salvation, the blood, the blood and the wine. It's been a feast for the senses as we have seen and we have tasted and we have heard the message of faith, the message of Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, his resurrection. And so today, if you're coming thinking, I don't know what I believe, then my encouragement is to come and receive 
prayer. Doubt is not the opposite of faith. Unbelief is the opposite of faith. We all wrestle with doubt. So come and stand in the body this morning. Come and stand with friends, the prayer ministry team, and be strengthened in the faith. Or for anything that you're facing this week, or anything you would like to give thanks to God for, come and receive prayer to my side. Let me read a blessing and a collect. Appropriate as we've looked at John 20, a collect for St. Thomas, almighty and eternal God, who for the firmer foundation of our faith allowed your holy apostle Thomas to doubt the resurrection of your son till word and sight convinced him. Grant to us who have not seen that we also may believe and so confess Christ as our Lord and our God, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And may we know the peace of God that passes all understanding. May it guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Friends, have a fantastic week. Come forward for prayer ministry. If it's your first time being here, we have these I'm New cards. We would love to say hello at the Connect station at the back and get to know you over a cup of tea and a coffee. Have a fantastic week. God bless. And we'll see you again soon.
Shadow of doubt, my love. 